I was off to Turkey to check out Kraken yachts and see for myself if they are as good as they seem. First thing to notice is the size of each rig. Side by side are the Kraken 66 White Dragon on the left and the Kraken 50 Sophie Marie on the right. They almost match. That is a tremendous sail area for a 50-foot boat. Dick will tell us more about how this is possible. Here we are on a Kraken 50, Sophie Marie, and Dick is going to tell uh, us all about the boat. David, there's a lot to take you through bits and pieces. And if we start here, the first thing is that all Krakens are Solent rig. And in, if you understand the Solent rig, you should not have a gap less than this between them. Otherwise, when you get a one sail, it may bind onto the other and you've got yourself a problem. You, you'll have, of course, I keep forgetting about it. You see so many boats, you know most of these wrinkles. Looking at the um, arrangement here, so that you understand, this is the structural stay. The inner jib stay is the structural stay. That means that, that when that's taken right up to the top of the mast, but running just from uh, a meter and a half down, that uh, backstays, the backstays are then tensioned to the top of the mast, and effectively what you have is a fractional rig, mm -hmm. effectively. The big advantage of that is that then you can tension and retention uh, the Genoa stay very easy and you can eliminate the horror of all hor horrors running backstays. You've got no running backstays. So in the first place, um, obviously you can have two choices here. You can have uh, manual furlers and you can have e electric furlers. In this particular boat, this owner has made a dreadful mistake. I think we probably talked about it. And the dreadful mistake that he has made, and I tried to talk him out of it, was he didn't want to have any electric winches. Oh. <laughs> it's a big boat without electric yeah. winches. Um, and uh, I, yeah, he wouldn't have it. He's now asked us to retrofit two electric winches to each side. But it's too late, we can't do it, don't have the time. Um, and so he's gonna then do that when he gets to Malta matter but if you don't have uh, electric furlers what you do want to do yeah, is have winches. electric main sheet winches and that's also the yeah and, and anyway um, most people go oh well even if I'm having that uh, I'm so also having <laughs> having electric uh, winches as well when you look at the deck gear here what you're looking at is battleship kind of grade you look at look at the size of the uh, all of the fittings here um, the uh, cleats each individual cleat uh, will hold 11 and a half ton and as you can see uh, what you've got is a heavy stainless plate underneath it so that you uh, don't damage uh, the deck with the chain and so forth mm -hmm. we come to the uh, chain locker the anchor locker and there's the chain locker there what you've got in this particular uh, boat that's a hundred meters of chain uh, and that's extendable uh, by a further 40 50 meters of uh, uh, octoplat so that uh, when you come to a situation and you probably will want to uh, anchor in 40 meters of water uh, you've got no problem, mm -hmm. but what you don't want to be doing is having uh, the octoplat anywhere in, it always has to be in the water column, it must never get anywhere near the bottom because once it wraps itself around a coral head, you've got disasters. <coughs> that you get is, a watertight bolt head here? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. which I'm going to show you here, so, okay. uh, thanks. And there's a gypsy on the winch. I like to see that up there too. <clears throat> it was unlocked. It was unlocked. <laughs> wow, that's that's now, gasket. We believe in, in space, and we again <laughs> you got yeah. super heavy glass. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, and we, you know, in a cruising boat. 
you never, ever, ever are going to have enough space, even uh, however much space you've got. What you've got is a sealed bulkhead here. You've got a sealed bulkhead here, two crash bulkheads. When we get to the yard, I'll explain to you the layup in particular to this area, because the layup in this particular area is uh, needs a, uh, a bit of it, uh, explanation. Because firstly, we use aramid down the stem, which is Kevlar in the layup. But in addition to that, below the floor of the anchor locker, which forms this triangle at the stem, at the bow, uh, below the floor, uh, the boat is solid. It's completely solid. So you can smash, you can, you can take a chainsaw and cut into it, and this boat will not have water ingress going past that bulkhead. It's not possible. The second bulkhead, again, obviously, uh, is, is, is a fully secured bulkhead as well. Um, and what you've got the ability to do, if I just get you to jump off a second, When you're rigging, uh, when you're rigging the code sail, if you go for the code, I can't remember. I think you did uh, with with a code <coughs> sail set up, which includes that sprit, and then the pole on the mast. What you can do is rig a bag up on here, mm -hmm. so the sail will stow straight down into it, mm -hmm. both ends up, straight out, straight in. But look at the size of the lazarette. Yeah. Big, yeah. And the lazarette is still, you have still bigger lazarette than in 95% of all other boats. Yeah. Sure. The next feature, this is all from the little black books, right? So you come into a marina, and here in the, in, in the Met, it's always going to be stern to. But as you know, in the States and wherever you are in the world, it'll be alongside. And they give you a alongside berth, and you can be bloody sure. The, 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 the pontoon pod, the electric pod, is just slightly out of range for the, the fitting at the stern. So in Krakens you have one at the bow and one at the stern. That's, That's really very smart. Nice. Yep. That's yeah. what I was looking it's at. It's just thought. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that too. The lock that way. Right, now, thanks mate, cheers. <coughs> of course the beauty of the jib, and it's a 400% jib with a sonant rig, is that it's tracked and, uh, inside the shrouds, mm -hmm. which means you can get incredibly w close to the wind. Yeah. But it also means, because it's a full size 100% jib, that there's enough power in that sail, it's a blade jib, so you get maximum area to it, you get uh, full drive for going upwind. I mean, on a morning like this morning, we just got to hope we get a bit more wind tomorrow. There was a bit of forecast for wind today, but uh, there's not much out there at the moment. Um, coming to, uh, I'll just show you, the, the hatches are all flush Lumar hatches. As you can see, good thick heavy hatches. We did fit uh, uh, Solimar hatches. Um, and uh, everything we do uh, on, a cra on Krakens is tested where at all possible. Uh, th there's, um, that's the gator there, by the way, mm -hmm. has inside, um, what's it called? It's a, it's a special expanding foam mm -hmm. that is set inside so there's no water ingress ever down the mast. But coming to the solar uh, Solimar hatches, uh, which look very nice, we tested them on White Dragon. There are uh, 11 hatches on, on White Dragon. Uh, in 12 months, every one of them leaked. Oh. And we took them, we, we contacted back Solimar and said, uh, hey, you guys, you know, the hatches are leaking. Oh, sorry, it's a one year warranty. I said, no, 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 you don't understand. If you don't sort this out, and in a way, <laughs> we know we can put them on other boats, they're never gonna go on another cracker. Uh, they wanted to be stupid, and so uh, they're not on any cracker. So we've el eliminated that particular problem uh, and changed to these uh, Lumar hatches. 
Now, in this particular boat, it's a Z spars mast, but we have uh, we have uh, now changed to Selden. Selden. Uh, Selden in mast furling. I've sailed a lot of my life with Selden in mast furling. It is, in my estimation, easily the best uh, best one on the market. Best one on the mar yeah. on the market. The mast quality <clears> is high. The mast is a little bit more expensive. There's nothing wrong with the Z spark mast. How do you clean this area? Does it drain? Yeah, it, it fully drains. It does. Okay. It, it's fully it bird fully... poop and all kinds of stuff is yeah, going to fall you, in there. You, yeah, you, you can, and you can wash it and flush it through. Uh -huh. And this deck collar does remove, it, but okay. it, we've designed it in such a way that uh, the lowest point will flush out. Okay. So you won't. Have and that is problem. it a big drain, or is it? Can it get clogged easily? No, it's a, it's a big channel. With it is. It's a big. It's a big channel with full access to it. Um, and you can take the panels out inside, and you can also clean that way. Um, and uh, to to cut a long story short mm -hmm. on, on that one, you, you, rather than have little tubes, some do that. Yeah. Uh, and and they do get, as you will know, problems. <laughs> and these are big. Channels. That's by my big question. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Um, in terms of uh, the. The, the the pole here, that's the pole that goes complete with the set for the uh, Code K. Uh, the Code K is a sail that I developed with uh, Carnies of Quantum Sails, and it's specifically designed to work with um, the uh, Solent rig. And the beauty of that particular sail is that it is full enough uh, to take the wind that is deflected into it from the Genoa that is obviously when you're running is further upwind than the uh, than the Code K uh, which is set on the opposite side so the assumption being that you're going to set both of the sails uh, and yet it's flat enough so that it furls flat so the operation of that is quite important because one of the things one of the reasons that uh, cruising shoots get old and faded and don't ever wind up being used is because there's, you know, when you're short-handed, they're aggravation. Yeah. And as soon as they're up, oh, you're worried about the wind threshold is too great. Well, a Code K has a much wider wind threshold between five knots of a parent uh, and 20 knots of a parent. And when it's 20 knots of a parent, the sail's not gonna blow out, but the boat is gonna be overpowered. So you already know you have gotta put it away. Then you furl it away on the continuous furler and you leave it. You're not, you're not de-rigging it and stowing it. Then you take the sail out again and then you put it away again. So generally I would set that uh, on a voyage, I would set that in port before I go, bang. Mm -hmm. Now you've got three jibs. So you've seen it in, I'm sure, some we, of the we videos. We've got code zeros. What's the difference between that and a code K? The, the code... Uh, code zero and a code K is the shape of the sail. Just the difference it's of different. the cut. It's between, it's between a, a one and a. It's between a zero and a two, uh -huh. uh, and it's a. If if it's as full as a code zero, then when you come to furl it away on on its own uh, stitched in um, uh, luff, what you'll find is it won't stick, it right. won't go nice flat. and flat. It yeah. won't look like that. There'll be bits sticking out. So they out. do cut, they call them a code zero, but they cut them smaller so that they do roll flat. Yes. So it truly is then, but, yeah. So it's, it, it is. In, in, in which case it's gonna be similar to the code K that we designed. Correct, yeah. okay. But in on top of that, uh, it's also made uh, out of a heavier material, as I said, with a, uh, a wider wind threshold range. And that is ultraviolet proof. Whereas the, whereas the parachute materials are not, and you leave them out for a month, then you've got to buy a new sail. Right. Whereas you haven't with the Code K. Right? Okay. okay. So let's just show you a couple of other points while we're up on this deck. It's quite important and you will never notice it. If you just, uh, if you, you're going to need to get down low and see this. You can see here, it isn't one piece as you would normally expect <laughs> and you can't see the bolts going through into the deck mm -hmm. because this area this stanchion and rails that's the area where you get most damage when people idiots come alongside you and crash into you or you're the idiot and you crash into other people it's the stanchions that take it so 
bearing that in mind, inside here, <coughs> inside the cat rail here, is a steel plate, stainless steel plate. This uh, plate is bolted through to it with uh, three bolts. This one internally is bolted through to it with one bolt. It's a heavier bolt and it's of course past the thresholds that would take uh, a, a human uh, slamming into it. Can you but, access this bolt I was going to say, what's the access? Yeah, you are, <laughs> <laughs> this you undo here, look. Uh -huh. Right. This yep. lifts off and gives you full access to that bolt yeah, inside. The and, the three don't bolt. and the plate inside you have no access to, nor you will ever need any access to. Access to. This plate you have access, but when you take that off, you've got the three bolts yeah. inside here and you can remove. But the point is, if somebody slams into that, that bolt is sacrificial. Yeah, I see. And it will snap off rather than it rip out the deck. Mm -hmm. And that's where your real cost comes in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The next thing to show you while I'm down on my knees here is that um, is the shape of this bulwark. Yeah. Uh, that was the shape that bulwarks were when they were teak, but in or or, or anyway wood, uh, but varnished uh, is a terrible pain in the ass, and obviously if you go unvarnished, it looks grey and awful. However, what's happened now on boats? is that that concave area, this area has been done away with because it's expensive to do. And that is vital because when the boat is healing, your foot fits into there mm -hmm. and it doesn't slide off over the top. So when the boat's healing, you've got a very good brace. Mm 